now available in paperback. From the author of the critically acclaimed book, The Man Crisis, comes The Woman Crisis. Learn why so many women have become lost in their quest to have it all in The Woman Crisis. Get your copy of The Woman Crisis in paperback at Amazon.com and online booksellers today. One of my viewers wanted me to do another installment in the Historical Women in Crisis series. And for this installment in the Historical Women in Crisis series, they wanted me to talk about Kristen Rossum. Now, your Kristen Rossum, in November of 2000, murdered her husband, Greg DeVillers, with a lethal dose of fentanyl after he found out that she was stealing methamphetamine from the medical examiner's office where she worked and was also having an affair with her Australian boss, Michael Robertson, in 2000. Now, your Kristen Rossum grew up in a Claremont, California, the daughter of two college professors, and lived a very privileged life. And as your Kristen Rossum was growing up, she became quite rebellious, drinking and smoking, and then eventually trying marijuana, and then uh, escalated her behavior by going out here and taking crystal meth or methamphetamine. And as she was taking methamphetamine, she became addicted to crystal meth, and her parents helped her manage to get uh, uh, overcome her addiction and as they helped her overcome her addiction, they helped her enroll at the University of Redlands, but sadly she wound up getting kicked out of that school and wound up relocating to another school where she went to San Diego State University after her parents wound up filling out her applications and helping her get into school after overcoming her addiction. Now, your Kristen Rossum went on to graduate from San Diego State University with honors at summa cum laude and eventually I believe her family possibly wound up getting her a job at the San Diego County Medical Examiner's Office and as she got this job at the San Diego Medical um, Examiner's Office she wound up marrying your Greg DeVillers in 1999 and as they were looking to go out here and build a life together your Kristen Rossum started to relapse with her methamphetamine addiction as she started an extramarital affair with Michael Robertson. Now, as they came together in this affair, your Michael Robertson and your Kristen Rossum, your Greg DeVillers found out about the extramarital affair that his wife was having, and he also found out that she was stealing from the San Diego Medical Examiner's office and instead of filing for divorce, what he did was say that he was going to go out here and tell everyone what was happening. And this was, let, was what led to your Kristen Rossum's motive for murder. Now, because your Kristen Rossum wanted to continue getting access to the methamphetamine they were stealing from the um, police department and the medical examiner's office, she managed, she wanted to go out here and take the life of her husband and she did this by injecting your um my, your greg de villers with a lethal dose of fentanyl and as he was dying from this lethal dose of fentanyl your Kristen rossum then called 911 and said that greg de villers her husband had committed suicide however your greg de villers had not committed suicide and his family looking at the cause of death his brother said that his brother was not suicidal and because he said his brother was not suicidal he didn't he went out here and demanded an outside investigation now around the same time the san diego court, the medical examiner's office found out about kristen rossum and your michael robertson's theft of this methamphetamine and their affair and wound up terminating your kristen rossum and michael robertson from their positions at the San Diego County Medical Examiner's Office. And as this was going on, the Los Angeles Medical Examiner did an autopsy on Greg DeVillers, and they found that the cause of your Greg DeVillers' death was a homicide. And they found it to be a homicide because they started to see that there was, again, a serious conflict of interest as related to your Kristen Rossum working at the um, San Diego Medical Examiner's Office, 
and they also found evidence that you know your Robertson and your Rossum had been hiding their addiction to crystal meth and this led to a possible motive for the murder of Greg DeVillers now quickly after finding out all of this evidence the San Diego Police Department then went out here and issued a warrant for the arrest of Kristen Rossum and went out here and arrested your Kristen Rossum for the murder of her husband of only barely two years, Greg DeVillers, and she was then arrested and charged with this murder and her parents even paid her $1.25 million bail and picked her up from, prison, from the jail. Now, this trial went on and they managed to find hard evidence as related to your Kristen Rossum as related to her affair that she was having with Robertson and also found that she had stolen the methamphetamine from the coroner's lab and also found that there was evidence for of her of her going out here and purchasing the roses that were around the body of your um, Greg de Villers which your Kristen Rossum wound up putting around his body to make it look like it was a suicide similar to something that happened in the movie American Beauty. But this movie showed how ugly your Kristen Rossum really was and your Kristen Rossum again participated as I believe in this murder because she wanted to go out here and continue having her smooth world where she would continue to get access to the drugs that were in the evidence locker of the loss of the San Diego coroner's office and because she wanted to continue getting access to those drugs and continue participating in her addiction this is why she wanted to murder her husband because her husband was telling the truth about the drugs she was using and how she was going to compromise the um, Los Angeles talks the office of where she worked as a toxicologist so your Kristen Rossum was an addict who went out here and murdered her husband and this falls right in line with everything I talk about as related to the chapter in the woman crisis regarding addiction and the woman crisis now the addiction that Kristen Rossum had was one that basically led to her becoming a murderer and again she became a murderer because she wanted to maintain her smooth world and because she wanted to maintain her smooth world that her husband was going to up and this is why she went out here and took the life of her husband and wound up going to look to just to go out here and participate in this crime now this whole crime was one that basically eventually cost the city of San Diego a lot of money because the family of the de, 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 of, of Greg de Villers wound up filing a lawsuit and this lawsuit basically was one that proved that admit, led to the city of San Diego being liable for the death of Greg de Villers and as a result they they basically got a, a, a I believe about five to ten million dollars compensatory reward as related to the death of Greg de Villers because a judge said that they were liable for this but the original judgment was over ninety million dollars because they said that Kristen Rossum could have made money on this on this crime but the whole thing was she was just this whole crime happened because you had a a woman who was just out here who was out here on drugs extremely dysfunctional and basically was a woman in crisis like I talk about in my book the woman crisis because when I look at the behavior of Kristen Rossum it fits the pattern that I talk about in the chapters regarding addiction and it also fits the chapters as related to murder and the woman crisis because when women are out here and they're in these jobs and they want to continue maintaining their lifestyle they'll do anything to maintain that lifestyle as related to addiction including taking the lives of their relatives and that's what happened here with your Kristen Rossum who after being convicted for the murder of her husband was sentenced to life in prison and as she was sentenced to life in prison she's now had an appeal that was denied in 2016 and is now going to be in prison for the rest of her life with Bertha and Be Big Betty playing spades for the rest of her life, trading Little Debbie snack cakes, Raymond noodles, cups of coffee, 
packets of crystal light. She is she went from a very wealthy and, and privileged woman to a woman now living as an inmate and now a number. And instead of her building, going out here and building a family, she's locked down in a prison for the rest of her life. And that's all what happens to many of these women who wind up in crisis. Now, if you want to learn more about what leads to many women winding up becoming lost and becoming a woman in crisis, you can pick up my book, The Woman Crisis, on Amazon.com in paperback and Kindle format. You can also find The Woman Crisis at other online booksellers like Smashwords, the iBookstore, Google Play, and Barnes and & Noble. And if you want to see me make more videos about women in crisis, you can, you can go out here and send me a cash app. And if I know something about that subject, I will make that video for you. That's all I have to say for this video. You can comment, rate, and subscribe. Now available in paperback and Kindle, Stop Simping in Cyberspace. Learn how to avoid predatory females like Instagram models and e-girls in their virtual con games with Stop Simping in Cyberspace. Get your copy of Stop Simping in Cyberspace in paperback and Kindle today.